Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a new movie review this week, which I saw last week along with my family, but that's okay, we had to take some time. But it's Frozen 2, which is the latest sequel to the original 2013 animated feature from Disney, which is a take on Hans Christian Andersen's uh, story, The Snow Queen which follows the adventures of two sisters from Arendelle, Anna and Elsa. Yeah, one is uh, quite normal, the other one isn't, but she has magical powers where she can actually shoot uh, you know, snowflakes or go around freezing and and shooting all these ice icicles and all this stuff. She, you know, she can even make her own kingdom. She can even build a snowman with her powers, everything. <laughs> um, but this time they join in with Kristoff Olaf the Snowman and Swin the Reindeer to embark on a journey to discover the origins of, of Elsa's magical powers and to save their kingdom after hearing a mysterious voice that calls out to Elsa. So yes. Now yes the movie had been very popular over the years, uh, ever since the original came out. You know, we've seen a lot of merchandising going around. Anna and Elsa toys, as well as uh, Olaf, the snowman, Swin, the reindeer, and Kristoff, and my other stuff, too. Yeah, I mean, everywhere you go, there's nothing but Frozen. <laughs> and I know the song, Let It Go, has been sung by many people, especially when they went on viral on YouTube or any other internet website out there that exists. Um, but yeah, I can see why. And it won an Oscar for Best Animated Feature. And I know uh, John Travolta actually had trouble um, as he's saying the name of the actress, who's also the singer. Um, Idina Mansell, that's her name. And I hope I said it right because I guess I don't blame them too. Sometimes I had mistakenly uh, said their names wrong. Like I, I didn't pronounce it very well. Yeah. So I know I just said her name right. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's what happened at the Oscars uh, in 2014. Yeah, which I made it up for it in 2015 too when. You know, they were both uh, together, you know, doing a another um, award. Um, but yeah, it's already becoming, um, and already the film's been grossing billions worldwide, I mean, for the new sequel, the same way that the first film has done. Yeah, the highest grossing animated film. So far, so good. And, and... What's really important, just like the first film, is that not only for the animation and the visuals that they have, that are incredibly stunning, but it has a story. Even with that it actually works. I mean it it tells it follows what's going on and and it deals with the characters themselves, including Anna and Elsa, you know, how sisterhood is more important, you know together and yeah the music of course was incredibly stunning and the vocal performances they they all did a very excellent job providing them so you know they, they took a lot of good effort to do so I mean think about it with a team of of Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee both of them have worked on Rick and Ralph, I mean, they can really come up with something this magical. Even for another fairy tale for Disney. I mean, I know this year, you know, Disney's already been, you know, buying out a lot of stuff already. I mean, they already bought out Fox, and they got Disney Plus now, and and they've been getting a lot of uh, live-action remakes. So, yes, but... But I, I would rather be, like, watching something good for a change. And I, I know, even with the Marvel films that they have, too, you know, with Captain Marvel and Avengers Endgame come to mind. 
I mean, they've, they've been going through hard times. But I'm just happy that for the best, for all the for all the tough times that's been going on these days, I'm just happy to finally see a good movie for a change. And, and I have seen some good films uh, this year, so since we're already getting ready for the new year, and of course we had uh, all the shorts, you know, such as Frozen Fever, which uh, played before. Um, the Cinderella live action remake, which that was impressive, that I love. And of course, we even have Olaf uh, Frozen Adventure, which was um, a very long short uh, film, which unfortunately um, some patrons uh, complain about it because uh, they thought that the short was way too long and, and it was being played before uh, Coco. Because they, they came in just for Coco, not just for the movie. Which is funny because, you know, the people complain about that when Mickey's Christmas Carol came out. Uh, which was a 25 uh, minute short before The Rescuers came out. That was going to be played afterwards. No. I person they didn't complain about um, The Prince and the Pauper, which was only, I believe, you know, a little long before the rescues down under was played and they actually had a uh, intermission uh, right in the middle of it which I guess Roger Ebert did complain about that but I don't see anybody else complaining about it and that's another thing too you know people were complaining about the, the success of Frozen and how popular it was almost in the same way that The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast were but even then I'm, I'm just I'm tired of all the negativity that's going around towards people. I understand, you know, people get tired of it, but I would never get tired of it. I would always remember it from from time to time. I mean, no matter what decade we're in. I mean, I'm already getting sick and tired of trolls. I mean, that took the popularity away from Frozen. Yeah, which is amazing because that film actually had trolls too. And guess what? The trolls in that film aren't even as ugly as the trolls in the DreamWorks film. Yeah, and, and I'm just sick and tired of Timber... I'm, just, I'm getting sick and tired of Timberlake. He needs to stop making movies. He needs to stop being in movies or even doing the voice of them. I mean, why, why won't he just give up? But that's what happens when, you know, he's he's being totally relevant these days. I know, okay, I don't want to get into that. It's, I mean, I can't even believe we're getting a sequel to uh, Trolls 2. Yeah, and that's coming out. Ugh. And I even saw that stupid trailer before I saw this. What, what a great uh, winter season. Let's get to the review. It stars Kristen Bell, Idina Menzel, Josh Gad, Jonathan Grove, Sterling Kate Brown, Evan Rachel Wood. Yes, Evan Rachel Wood. It's been in films like The Wrestler, A Little Secrets, among others. Um, Alfred Melinda. Yes, he was in Spider-Man 2, but he was also in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, the Man Who Knew Too Little, you know, the Bill Murray comedy, and among others. Arthur Plimpton. He was in films like um, The Goonies, uh, as well as Joss and Sam, uh, among others. Jason Ritter happens to be the son of John Ritter. However, it's a soul. Uh, Rachel Matthews. Jeremy Sisto and Clairon Hines. Yeah. It's written by Jennifer Lee and it's directed by both Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee. The movie begins set in the flashback of the Kingdom of Arendelle. King Arnar had told the story to their young girls, uh, Anna and Elsa, that their grandfather, King Runard, had established uh, a neighboring tribe of Norfadra 
by building a dam to enter their homeland, the Enchanted Forest. Therefore, a fight had occurred, resulting in Runard's death completely, which then the battle had enraged the elemental spirits of earth, fire, water, and air. Somehow the spirits had disappeared, and a wall of mist traps everyone into the forest, and Arnar had barely escaped due to the help of an unknown savior where you get to hear the mysterious voice you know, that sings. Uh, years later, Elsa had celebrated autumn in the kingdom with Anna, joined by Olaf the snowman, Kristoff the ice harvest, harvester, and, and his reindeer, Swen. Um, that's when Elsa suddenly hears a mysterious voice calling out from her, you know, that singing voice. She follows it, but unintentionally awakens the elemental spirits, which disrupts uh, Arendelle completely, forcing everyone to evacuate, and Grand Pobble and the Trolls colony had arrived to Arendelle, and Pablo informs that they must set things right by discovering the truth about the kingdom's past that's happening. Um, so therefore, Elsa, Anna, Olaf, Kristoff, and Swen had embarked to the journey of the Enchanted Forest by following the mysterious uh, singing voice. But then, when they go straight to the mist part of Elsa's touch, the air spirit informs of a tornado spinning around, had swept everyone into the vortex. Elsa tries to stop it, which then forms into a set of ice sculptures, which happens to be the one that saved Arnor. And they actually encountered um, a troop of Aradelian soldiers and Nofadra, all which were in conflict with one another before the fire spirit appears. Elsa discovers the spirit of the magical salamander, calms it down, you know, which, um, which arranged a truce between the soldiers and Norfordron by explaining that their mother was Norfordron and their father was an Aridelian. The existence of the fifth spirit, which will unite the, the people in the magic of nature, and soon afterwards, uh, Elsa, along with Anna and Olaf, had continued to head north, which then leaves Kristoff and Swen behind. Especially when uh, Kristoff was actually planning on, on marrying uh, Anna later on, because he just had uh, a ring for her. Yeah. So... Then they found out that their parents wrecked ship and their map to the route to Otahalan. I hope I said it right because I know it's hard. <laughs> Which is a mythical uh, river that's told by their mother that contains all the explanations of the past. Um, now, apparently um, Elsa wanted to work alone to actually uh, stop all this. But Anna, refu but Anna refuses and she wanted to work together with her as a team because she's afraid that she'll, she might be able to lose Elsa. But then Elsa just lied and decided to just go on her own anyway and just leave them behind. But then soon the, she was at the beach. Um, I know you, if you saw this in the trailer you probably will know where she tries to um, go all the way straight into the uh, ocean so she can be able to make it there um, but first try didn't work out but then she did it the second time and she got it right uh, that's where she spotted um, a horse a which is a um, basically in an agua horse that appears 
Uh, yeah, it was, it, which was a water spirit that appears and what is it? Which then, which we spotted a water, which we spotted a water spirit called the Nog, which guards the uh, sea to Atal Halan. By reaching it, um, that's where she did discover the voice. And this is the the biggest twist of them all. And I know that that's why the film's going to have some spoilers in there, but that's okay. Maybe just to be safe on that level. Um, yes, uh, we find out that the voice after all this time happens to be her mom. Yeah. You know, Anna and Elsa's mother. And she was the one who, and her powers were gifted by nature because of Aldana's selfless uh, act to, of saving uh, Agnar. We also had those uh, those uh, tall giants, you know, going around attacking everyone too. But then next thing you know, Elsa was frozen, and suddenly Olaf was fading away. So Anna was the only one left to actually save um, the entire kingdom as they could by actually waking up the giants and to destroy the Dom. So they, they had to... So he calls out uh, the Arendellian soldiers to stop it. And hoping that they'll be able to... And hoping that they'll be able to have you know, Elsa unfrozen. And that way she'll be able to save um, the kingdom from, from being flooded. Because, which I knew this was going to be a, a difficult task that's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think I'm going to leave it at this way for now. I mean, I don't want to spoil the, the last surprise, but I did mention one thing, but that's okay. Because um, I, I know they had a lot of uh, spirits uh, going around to, you know, putting all together to set things right and hoping to save the the forest and and the entire kingdom from being destroyed and hoping things will and hoping that this will be a better life for everyone so, and that's the more important thing of them all too and and of course um, sisterhood and everything and it does have a happy ending so it's good to hear that this is actually a better improvement uh, to the original 2014 film because I know, even though I love the original film, I admit that there are some, a bit of um, tiny flaws that I had when we find out about, um, you know, Anna's uh, love interest. So. Yeah, because I didn't explain it in the original review, which I shot this in a webcam. Back in 2013, I was living in that old apartment. Um, was yeah, they throw in the true love's kiss uh, cliche, and and then we learn that that he was the villain, which to me was pretty weak. It kind of breaks the film down a bit. Um, now this is really interesting too because uh, the movie didn't even have a villain at all. In the sequel, now you may think that there might be one, but actually there were there really wasn't. So that's a big surprise. And I didn't think there really were going to have a villain anyway. So I, at least what what matters the most for the story is is to focus on what's what's really going on. Was discovering the truth, and that's the more important thing of them all than just dealing with uh, the situation. And it's nice that we got new characters like Yelena, along with uh, Mafius, you know, the leader of the Arendelle soldiers, and even Ryder. Wow. And yes, there, there are times when they did make fun of uh, the original film too. Like they're going back to the past to where all this had happened. 
And I kind of liked that too because they were, t <laughs> they basically show what was going on. So it plays it by itself. And yeah, of course, <laughs> Elsa just destroys <laughs> what's supposed to be the love interest of Anna, but they realize that um, Anna had made a big mistake by planning to marry that guy because they weren't so sure if he was going to be the right one. Okay, um, now um, as for the um, the songs that we got, um, just which is cool because now we got some more uh, songs to follow. Uh, that's not trying to mimic um, the original songs like Let It Go, for instance. Um, but Christoph Beck, um, who did the score of the original, came back and there was a lot of great songs uh, joining in by uh, Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez, both returned. Um, I would say the one song that's actually becoming probably the next Let It Go, but hopefully that that won't become... <laughs> um, hopefully this is not the song that's going to be more tiresome or be overplayed too was a song called Into the Unknown and I gotta say that that song is actually even beautiful and better than ever I know there's a uh, another version of that too which is actually sung by you you couldn't believe this uh, Panic at the Disco yeah so he's singing that version of that too uh, there's even the um, Another song called Lost in the Woods by Weezer. <laughs> yeah, and I love Weezer, so I, I have listened to Weezer like back in the 90s and all the way through today. So I'm glad they're still doing music. And it's nice that uh, Manzi the Dino Mansell is singing the, you know, actually singing two songs, so. Um, Besides Into the Unknown, is uh, the next right is Show Yourself, uh, joining in by Evan Wachel Wood, which she also sang the song Always Found, so that's amazing. Um, I even love the song The Next Right Fame by Kristen Bell. So I know, I know there's a lot of songs on the, um, the soundtrack, and it's amazing. And not only that, but it's also catchier, even better than, than ever before. And also, um, I, I like some of the moments uh, with uh, Olaf, the snowman. Um, yeah, like he's always going around questioning everyone once they're going on their journey. Like they, he keeps saying, did you know this? Did you know that? Or, <laughs> or apparently, you know, he, he said... <laughs> Or when the the scenes where where the um, the spirits of um, all these um, yeah the spirit of uh, fall leaves um, appearing around, uh, which uh, he was trying to find where where his friends are, but but then he accidentally said Samantha. <laughs> I'm like, who's Samantha? <laughs> so uh, that was pretty fun. And there's even another moment uh, with Kristoff and Swen, which uh, I know I, I I don't I don't want to give away too much, but I just I just thought it was really neat to see something uh, special <laughs> uh, where where he's always where we begin to see uh, Swen actually talking to him, and I was wondering what Swen's voice would have been like, <laughs> but I I know he's always been you know. Always pretending like Swin is actually speaking to him. <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, anyway. But yes, Frozen 2 is actually uh, better than the original. I couldn't believe it. And it's even more stronger than ever before. And the animation is still beautiful, breathtaking. And um, it still looks as stronger and impressive and visually stunning than ever before that that it will definitely be as magical as it can get and yes it's definitely the best film of the year too 
so far with uh, all the movies that I love uh, this year, like Alita Battle Angel and you know, it's Toy Story 4. Um, I did enjoy the Lego movie uh, 2, the second part, as well as all these other movies I've seen so far this year. So I'm, I'm very impressed. So um, definitely check out Frozen 2 if you, if you can. Um, I, I think you'd really appreciate it. I mean, even, even if you're a big fan of the original or not. So. Anyway, that's uh, my review of Frozen 2, and I give it 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.